Friends, my sermon this morning is called Gifts from the Father. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you like to have a seat? Hey, man, could you play that as an introduction to every sermon, Ryan, that I do from now on? That is just like perfect. Uh, happy Father's Day again to all the fathers out there. God bless all our men, yes? Whether they are fathers or not, we need you guys. I have a lot of many great memories of my father who died in 2009. He imparted things in me and taught me things that I use each and every day. Years after his death, I consider these things to be gifts, gifts that I embrace and use. My dad was a very kind man. He was patient and he went out of his way always to put people at ease. To know my dad was to know someone who would help you. I try to be that way. My dad was funny. He used humor to draw people toward him, not push, him, push them away in a cruel kind of way. He knew just how to say something perfectly funny at just the right moment to diffuse a situation and to keep the environment helpful and light. I try to be that way. My dad loved God and his church. He was enamored with and dedicated to his Episcopal churches. It was from him that I first observed and learned dedication to the church. And I wouldn't be an Episcopal priest had it not been for him, that's for sure. But like any other gifts, they're only helpful if you use them. It's entirely up to me to put these gifts into use. I could be unkind, humorless, and unfaithful to God. And when I am any of those things, it's like I'm dishonoring my father's memory. So being kind and funny and faithful is my way of keeping my father alive in me. That his life is still having an impact through me. And so his legacy and memory lives on. Does that make sense? Say yes. yes. Good fathers give good gifts. My question to you fathers and grandfathers out there is this. What would your children and grandchildren say are the gifts that you are leaving them? What will be their memory of you? You know, yesterday I was in the HEB walking past a daughter helping her father put the groceries in the grocery sacks. And this man turned to this little girl and said, focus. Why can't you focus? If you're going to do it, do it right. And I was like, look. <laughs> how do you think that girl's going to remember her dad after he's gone? We've got to think about this, guys. If how your kids might remember you is not the way that you want, get busy changing that and start today. Double down this Father's Day on being the type of father that you want to be remembered as being. God is our father. This is a strong and powerful way that God has chosen to reveal himself to us. God, of course, is spirit, right? God the Father is not a physical person like the incarnate Jesus. But still, he wants us to think of him as a father. And as a father, he has given gifts to us. The gifts that the father has given are too many to mention, but today I'd like to focus on just three, but they are three important ones. Ready? Peace, hope, and salvation. I'd like to show you these three things and continue our study in the book of Romans that we preached from last week. Uh, in Romans chapter 4, last Sunday, we learned about grace, God, and grit. Today, from Romans chapter 5, peace, hope, and salvation. I invite you to turn and look at it with me. It's on page six and seven in your bulletin. It'll really help you to have this in front of you as we talk. First, peace. <clears throat> Anyone who has tried to be a good father wants to have peace with their children. It's hurtful not to be at peace with your kids. And I know if I should never not be, I would move heaven and earth to get an understanding so that I could achieve peace with them. God the Father has given peace with him as a gift to us. Listen, God wants to be at peace with you. 
Maybe some of you here this morning are not at peace with God because of things that have happened to you that you might blame God for. Or maybe because of things you've done that you've decided that God isn't going to forgive you for. But let's look together at Romans chapter 5, verse 1, the first verse there. See it? Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I ask you, are you at peace with God? If not, why not? Maybe it's time to lay that enmity in your heart down and turn instead to the Lord Jesus Christ, through whom this peace with God is accomplished. Our justification, see, our right standing, it comes by faith, not by works. It's not what we do, it's what we believe. Now look at verse 2. Through Jesus, we now have access to grace, forgiveness, and peace that is a gift. Again, not anything that we earn. Paul writes that this is a grace, you see that? That we can then stand in. We're standing in grace. So I ask you, if you were to stand before God today, what would you be standing in? Your own righteousness? Hey, look, God, I'm sort of kind of a pretty good person. Or would you be standing in Jesus' righteousness? I stand before you, God, a sinner. I stand before you only because of the grace of Jesus through his blood. Jesus who died for me. It's a big difference. Would you stand in fear? before God. I think I'm okay with you, God, but I guess I won't know for sure until Judgment Day. I really am hoping and counting that you're going to grade on a curve. <laughs> that where you're standing? Or are you standing in confidence, sure that the grace of Jesus extends to you, confident that through Jesus you have indeed obtained access to this grace and by faith been justified fully. Paul goes so far to say at the end of verse 2 that we can boast of the hope of sharing in the glory of God. Here, I'll do it. I'll boast. Look, no matter what this life dishes out to me, no matter how high the highs are or how low the lows are, it will not compare to the glory that awaits me when I am with my Father in heaven. For eternity, I will share in the glory of God. How can I boast this way? Because I have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace with God is a gift from God the Father to us. And this leads me to our second hope, our second uh, gift, which is hope. Peace with God leads to an incredible, unsinkable hope. This is what, what Paul means in verse 3, that we can also boast in our sufferings. What? I mean, I'm good at complaining about my sufferings. But why in the world would we boast about it? He explains it beautifully in verses 3, 4, and 5. Look at verse 3. Suffering produces endurance. If you have suffered and know, or known someone who has, you know that this is true. My own father suffered mightily as he approached his death, struggling to breathe and to move. Suffering produces endurance. You can't say that you have endured until you have suffered. Any endurance runner knows what it's like to feel that pain as they run mile after mile after mile. But soon, though, their endurance builds up and they're able to do it. Invite God, my friend, into your suffering, no matter how large or small it might be. Let it build endurance in you. Be stronger for what you are going through today, not weaker. Let the Lord help you and strengthen you. Now look at verse 4. Endurance then produces character. Enduring suffering will produce patience in you. It will build discipline in you. It will help you to notice and focus on the needs of others all the while you are, you are having big needs of your own. I'm telling you, be careful when you ask the Lord for patience. You know what he's liable to do? He's going very likely to send you an opportunity to be patient by enduring suffering. Look at verse 4 again. And character produces hope. When you have peace with God through Christ and you are standing in grace, allowing God into your suffering and asking for and receiving his help along the way, 
the endurance and character he builds in you will yield a glorious hope. Maybe you have known someone who has had great hope in the midst of their suffering. This is how they did it. It's a hope that knows that as bad as things might get, God will never leave us or forsake us. Even when the results are bad, sad, and yes, even tragic, the Lord Jesus is near to us and not far. And that even at the gate of death itself, we can have a hope knowing that Jesus has gone ahead of death and conquered it. Verse 5. See it? This hope does not disappoint us. Not only because God's promises are true, but because the Holy Spirit, you see that, is pouring God's love into our hearts along the way. If you are going through something difficult today, invite God your Father into that suffering. Suffering allows us to experience and know the love of God in a way that we would not have known otherwise. In our suffering, we learn of God's faithfulness and power Suffering is often what it takes for us to stop leaning on ourselves and to instead lean on Him. Suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and that hope does not disappoint us. Hope is a gift from the Father. Peace, hope, and finally, salvation. Would you look at verse 6 with me, please? I think you've got to turn the page over to see verse 6. Look at that. This incredible verse uproots the works righteousness person that insists that God's love only extends to the moral, the religious, and the upright, whatever that even means. Look at the verse. Who did Christ die for? The godly or the ungodly? Is this microphone on? Check one, two. What does it say? The godly or the ungodly? You see that? When did he die for you? When you were strong or when you were weak? Check one, two. <laughs> when you were weak. Listen to me, friend. You will never know this peace, this hope, and this salvation until you can admit your weakness and your ungodliness. We are all sinners in need of saving. In verse 7, Paul supposes that a person might die for someone who is righteous or like a really good person. But we were neither of those things, good or righteous, when Christ died for us. Instead, verse 8, see it? While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In other words, hear me, you do not need to leave here Go out there, get your act together, and come back to receive this peace, this hope, and this salvation. Maybe you were closer to God at one point in your life than you are right now, and you want to be back to that closeness. Just come back to Him today, in this place, right now. He doesn't need anything more from you then than He did back then. All He needs is faith. Have you, maybe you've never known this peace, this hope, and this salvation. Look one last time with me at verse 8. God proves his love for us that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. You, do need, you don't need to not be a sinner first. Come in faith and believe in my Lord Jesus Christ. Come and receive these gifts from our good, good Father peace, hope, and salvation. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. amen.